Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Let's go to the park! Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Yep, today is March 21st, 2024. And today is the 60th anniversary to the day of SeaWorld San Diego. We're gonna start with a little presentation. And I believe there was a be cake at the presentation. Good morning, SeaWorld San Diego! Today marks 60 years to the day that we first opened our gates here at SeaWorld San Diego. I'd like to introduce someone who's been with the company for 48 years. Please join me in welcoming Byron Surrett, our Chief Parks Operating Officer here at SeaWorld. It all started when four UCLA fraternity brothers, led by Milton Shedd, decided they wanted to create a place that allowed people from all over the world to come experience the wonders of the ocean firsthand. From the beginning, they pledged their venture would be dedicated to education, entertainment, research, and conservation. And so SeaWorld was born. We've grown in many ways over the years and have welcomed hundreds of millions of guests providing meaningful experiences that educate and inspire guests of all ages to care about marine life. Our SeaWorld teams are on call 24-7, 365 days, partnering with multiple government agencies, conservationists, stranding networks, zoological facilities, and others to rescue and help animals in need of care, always with the goal of rehabilitating and returning them to the wild. Well, what a better way to start off a party than with some cake and cupcakes. So, please join us as Charlie takes the first cut of our new 60th anniversary cake. So, there was cake. And I did indeed receive a cupcake. So let's go eat it. SeaWorld cupcakes are so good. You know, I was thinking about something. No other theme park that I've ever visited in my life has given me a free cupcake. Hmm, SeaWorld knows what's up. All right, there it is. The SeaWorld 60th anniversary cupcake. I think it's probably chocolate, but it's I don't know if you can really see. I don't know if the camera's really gonna show this, but the cupcake is not chocolate colored. It's actually a dark blue with um, some iridescent sparklies in it. Looks tasty. Let's dig in. Okay, so that tasted like a white cake, which would make sense because that's easier to add blue food coloring to and make the cake blue. Regardless, it was tasty and I love that icing. It's like some kind of buttercream or whipped cream icing. It's just so good. So, in the 60 years that SeaWorld has existed, the park has undergone a lot of changes. And one of those changes is something that doesn't tend to happen at theme parks, the front entrance. Now, like I mentioned in the last video, the park entrance and exit are currently over there, temporarily, because the actual park entrance is undergoing some reconstruction right now. And they'll move the entrance back once the construction is finished. But you know what? That's not even the original entrance to the park. Yeah, that's actually located Right over here. Now, unless you got your head in the clouds, you're gonna see dolphins if you come to SeaWorld. And one of the places you can see them, of course, is right here at Dolphin Point, as well as the Dolphin Amphitheater. But they haven't always been in those spots. Yes, once upon a time, SeaWorld's dolphins used to call Dolphin Cove their home. This little cove used to be where the dolphins lived, and there was even a show. 
that uh, I believe even included a pirate ship. Kind of like that one. And guests could watch the show from the stands, that island, or the bridge that used to connect to where I'm currently standing, roughly. Also, that island is significantly smaller than it used to be. And where I'm currently standing is now the waterfront area. But back in the day, this little area right over here was known as the Hawaiian Punch Village. And much like today, you could go there to grab a bite to eat and get yourself a Hawaiian Punch based beverage. Yeah, like those. You know, I read that after Hawaiian Punch's contract ended with SeaWorld, SeaWorld changed the name of the restaurant to the Bayside Cafe and then later closed it because of termites. So eventually the time came to move the dolphins. SeaWorld put the dolphins in a 160,000 gallon rectangular aquarium with stadium seating called the Theater of the Sea. Right back there. Yeah, somewhere right there around the dining area for the shipwreck cafe. Long before I ever sat here getting harassed for food by Peebs and Heron Knight. Ain't that right, Peebs? Did you know there used to be a Japanese village here at SeaWorld? I think there's even some remnants left. Like this beautiful sculpture right here. The Manta gift shop is also a carryover from the old Japanese village. Fun fact, the Manta gift shop is one of the few original buildings here at SeaWorld. After SeaWorld's initial opening in 1964, the park later added a bat ray pool to the Japanese village. Now, one of the main draws to the Japanese village were the divers, who would dive down and retrieve oysters with pearls in them and drop them in the tins that guests would purchase from the gift shop. You know, SeaWorld's bringing back some stuff for the anniversary. Maybe they bring that back. Uh, <laughs> that would roll. <laughs> you know, speaking of original buildings here at SeaWorld, there's the remnants of one. Yep, it looks like that yellow wall with the cinder blocks behind it is just about all that's left of Aquaria, World of Fishes which was actually called the Sea Grotto originally. And while it's sad to see an original building get demolished, I'm kind of interested to see what they're gonna put in there next. And from what I understand, it wasn't that SeaWorld just decided to demolish the building. There were structural issues because of its age. I'm just glad we got to go in there when it was open, see all those cool fish, like the alligator gars and the piranhas. Yeah. But SeaWorld's cooking up something new in there. This wall is evidence. Okay, random thought. With those tide pools drained, the sea stars are safe from peeps. For now. But you know what they say, when one door closes, another one opens. With the demise of the grotto, now come to fruition. A glorious new aquarium will rise from its ashes on the other side of the park where it'll arise from the ashes of a completely different attraction the submarine quest and it shall be glorious glorious i tell you oh check it out there's a uh, precious moments artist that's going to be here today right over there in the explorers cafe and it looks like he created a sea world exclusive that's pretty cool so SeaWorld has undergone a lot of changes over the decades. One of my favorite ones, as much as I love the animals here and they are priority number one, rides. Rides like the Sky Tower. And then there's this classic beauty, AKA the Gondola of Love. Which, as far as I'm concerned, is its real name and right next door to the Bayside Sky Ride. Right out in Mission Bay, you used to be able to take a hydrofoil ride. What's a hydrofoil? Funny you should ask. And that's what a hydrofoil is. You know, since we're over here, I thought we'd take a ride on the good old gondola of love. And actually, 
This is the first ride of the day. Minus the employees that test it out first. Feels good. Oh, and this is one of the park's additions that I really love. This beautiful little garden. So relaxing. Definitely one of my favorite spots in the park. So there's been way too many changes that have happened here at SeaWorld over the decades for me to cover in just one video. So I'm going to throw out a handful of the ones that make SeaWorld San Diego the unique park that it is. And those changes and additions include the Freshwater Aquarium in 1968, the Sea Lion Stadium in 1966, the Whale Arena, later renamed the Dolphin Amphitheater in 1971, Penguin Encounter in 1983, Shamu Stadium in 1987, Shark Encounter in 1992, Wild Arctic in 1997, Turtle Reef in 2011, Explorer's Reef in 2014, and Ocean Explorer in 2017. The park has also hosted celebrations like Electric Ocean, the Christmas Celebration, the Halloween Spooktacular, the Hallow Scream, the Summer Concert Series, and Inside Look. And with the gradual rollout of thrill rides in the park, SeaWorld San Diego became a coaster destination. With rides like Journey to Atlantis, Manta, Electric Eel, Emperor, and Arctic Rescue. Oh yeah, and uh, this one. I kind of like all of them. Although I gotta say, I usually skip rides like Journey to Atlantis and Shipwreck Rapids because I'm not always in the mood to get drenched. But maybe sometimes I am. Oh, there's another change. This whole play area used to be called Captain Kidland back in the day before it was the Bay of Play and now SeaWorld Rescue Jr. The main thing I remember about Captain Kidland was that little maze of punching bags. That and climbing on the netting. So I already told you that the park changed its entrance once, but did you know that the park changed its name? Yeah, the park opened as SeaWorld, but then later changed its name to SeaWorld. Wait, what? As indicated behind me, SeaWorld spells its name as one word. That's the current spelling. But originally, the park put a space between sea and world, as indicated by this freeway sign for SeaWorld Drive. They made the name change to avoid any confusion with the completely unaffiliated SeaWorld that's down in Australia. You know where they filmed that shower with Clear? Clear! No! I've got a special secret that I'm not afraid to use. <laughs> Hiya, peeps. How's it going? Are you enjoying the 60th anniversary celebration? Oh, really? Uh-huh. Well, that is just cool. Oh, peeps, you're such a character. See you later. Oh look, here's a change that just got completed recently. They finished with the paving in Dolphin Point. It looks really good. That's just history being continuously made. Ooh, check it out. A piece is going into place. Cool. So even with all the changes and additions and rides and attractions that have morphed over the years, the park's mission and goal remains the same, and that's the animals. Now, the number keeps changing over the years. I think it was around 36,000 when I first started coming to the park here in 2019. But now the number is up to 41,000 animals that SeaWorld has rescued. When was the last time you rescued 41,000 animals? Hey, check it out. SeaWorld has a photo and memorabilia exhibit for the 60th anniversary. Here's one of the previous sets at the Sea Lion and Honor Amphitheater. 
Of course, I really don't remember this set. The one I remember from when I was a kid was the Haunted Shack or Haunted something that it was. I wonder if that's the set for the Haunted show that was in the Sea Lion Amphitheater. Oh, so Knott's Berry Farm wasn't the only theme park in Southern California to have a volcano now, was it? Hmm. I never saw this show, but I remember when it was here. I think it was called City Streets or something like that. An old tour guide book. Ooh, I have one of those ornaments. It was on my tree this year. Um, is this a stroller or what? I can't tell. It could be, but for some reason I don't think it is. You got a very old scale in there. I'm guessing that's for weighing the animals. Ones that can fit on it anyways. There's some resolutions and proclamations and news articles about SeaWorld here. Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh, I was right. It was called City Streets. <laughs> right here has a whole bunch of aerial shots of the park's layout throughout the decades. Pretty cool. Although I gotta say, that's the weirdest hidden Mickey I've ever seen. Look familiar? And with that, it's about time for me to head on out. Thank you so much for joining me for the park's 60th anniversary and a little look back at some of the park's changes over the years. Until next time, see you later.